We're here at the Williamsburg British Car Club, their gala, and we're gonna be looking at some Rolls Royces, some Bentleys, and also some other British cars that are here, and hopefully you'll have a good time. Let's take a look. We're here, tell them your name. Rich Bradshaw, Rich Mid Bra Virginia. That's right, came all the way down from Mithlonian, right? Mid That's Lothian, a, yeah, yeah Mithlonian area. area for the club and to highlight what would be the R2. 53 R-Type, yeah. R-Type Bentley. If this was a Rolls, it would be the Silver Dawn. So what I wanna do is let him explain his car. So go ahead, it's all okay. on you. Got the car off of Bring a Trailer about three years ago. Uh, came out of Ontario, Canada, it was shipped there. Uh, it's a uh, 53 Bentley R-Type. They only made them for about four years, made about 2,300. They made 300 Silver, uh, uh, silver Dawns, the roll side. It's a uh, six cylinder, two uh, SU carburetors, uh, four speed, right hand drive, at 130 horsepower. Says it'll do uh, 120 miles an hour, but I just do it, keep it 55 and below. Starts all the time, just a wonderful car. Tudor gray, two tone, uh, just a wonderful car to drive. Well, I want to thank you for being able to let us enjoy your car. It's a beauty and uh, hope to see you back down here in Williamsburg. You will, sir. Thank you very much for everything. Thanks Thank for you. Nice meeting you. Pleasure nice meeting, meeting you. you. Thank you. Well, class, let's take a look around and see what else we can find. <laughs> this is a nice car. Got to find out whose car this is. I'm here with Rick. I know him from the Williamsburg British Car Club. And he has brought his... London Sterling Taxi. London. London, not Suffolk. <laughs> London. British Taxi. Yes, sir. And what year is this? This is 1986. It's an 86. When the Checker Cab Company failed, they sent a hundred of these over to try and get into the American cab business. And then the American labor unions made a rule that it had to be American cars for American taxis. And that's why you still drive a crappy Caprice Classic in Manhattan. There you but go. It could have been this. This is the only car ever purpose made as a taxi cab. Really? So it'll turn in 25 feet and it'll go a couple hundred thousand miles. Really? Yep. Well, how long have you had this car now? I've had this about seven years. I bought it out in California, mm -hmm. and this was owned by Merv Griffin. Really? Yeah, this was the uh, livery car at the Beverly Hilton for about 10 years, and then it came up for auction in uh, California, Mecham Auction, mm -hmm. and I went and uh, I knew what I wanted, and I got it, so. Really? Yeah. The, uh, when Merv Griffin had this at his, uh, at his ranch, mm -hmm. the Reagans rode in this car, and I have an email from his son saying they had lots of movie stars when it was at Beverly Hilton and when it was at the ranch, uh, at Merv Griffin's ranch. Lots of them rode in this car. So half of these were set up as limos. So it okay. has the same jump seats, uh, the same three seat that you'd have in a London taxi, but these were set up with the executive lights. Flip Wilson had one in LA. He rode it to, uh, to work every day. And instead of taxi, it said flip on, uh, on the lighted sign. Really? <laughs> But these were set up as limos, so they have the uh, drink station and uh, the executive seating. Now, I'm curious. Do you have on this car a left and a right blinker? Because didn't they have the little flags that used to come out? So the older ones had what they called the bunny ears. Right. Yeah, in London they had the bunny ears because that's all you could see in London traffic. So that's pre about 1960, and then they did away with the bunny ears and the front mirrors. Okay. Yeah. So okay. this is an 86, but it looks older because for 30 years- they No design the same, change. The same body. The truth is they didn't have enough money to recast the parts. 
Really? They were working on the engine and the cab cabbies were complaining about the gearbox. So they just left this from 1956 to 1989, the same body style, which is why it's that London icon. Alfred. Humphrey. Oh, Humphrey, like Hubert. Yeah. I'm here with Chip. That's your name, right? Chip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure I got it right. And it's his Mercedes Benz. What year is this? 1958. So, first thing, I want to thank you for letting us enjoy your car. And if you could tell us a little bit about it. And so far, what types of things have you done to get it at least back to where it is now? Most has been cosmetic. It still has the original factory clutch. Okay. Transmission's never been out. The block has never been out. Uh, it has had the head repaired. Uh, it has new seat covers uh, and a new top. Okay. This year's project was a radiator and new fresh chrome on the door handle. Okay. How hard has it been for you to find parts? Um, it gets a little challenging sometimes, mm -hmm. but you can still order front end parts from Mercedes and okay. get them in a couple days. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look to tune up this car, what type of oil do you use? I'm currently running 5W30 synthetic. Really? Yes. Well, that's pretty inexpensive. I like synthetic. I got gotcha. you. Put it in everything. Okay. Once broken in. Right. And I figure it's broken in. Absolutely. Well, Chip, it's been great. Thank you for letting us enjoy your car. Okay. Many years of good driving. <laughs> and I uh, hope you'll come back again and let us see this time when it's completely done. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. We're here with Liz. I know her name. <laughs> And introduce yourself. Jerry Lester. There you go. And he brought his absolutely beautiful Bentley. Yay! There you go. And you've had it now for how long? A little over a year. Little over a year. And how did you purchase this car? How did you get it? <laughs> I looked up and down the East Coast for a car. I couldn't find the color combination I wanted. Ended up buying it on the West Coast, which is dumb because you got to get it going to court. Got to have it shipped. Okay, but uh, anyway, it came from Hollywood, California, believe it or not. What is this color? This is called white sand metallic. Okay, all right. It's a little silver, but that's what Bentley calls it. Okay, it's a heavy car Very for heavy. its size. Very heavy, 5,100 pounds, dry. And if I remember right, it does zero to 60 in... Well, it depends on what you read. The book says 3.8 seconds. Mm -hmm. I've seen numbers down around 3.5, but uh, I'll believe the book. There was a time when anything under 10 seconds was considered very fast. There you go. There you go. But it's a, a beautiful car. This is a V12, right? It's actually a W12. Okay. It's two V6 engines, one here and one there, running into one crankshaft. All right. Okay. And Fuel injected, twin turbos. Puts out 626 horse. Wow. It's extremely, extremely beautiful. But I am also interested in the features. Yeah. So let's take a look at that. All right, well, listen. Could you explain the, it's absolutely stunning. It's like a work of art. It is, yeah, it really is. It's very, very well put together. Uh, the interior is called white linen. And all of these panels, which on most cars are plastic, is wood. That's all wood. And even the steering wheel is wood. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is uh, what's called the Milan interior, which is a step above the standard interior. But it has all the, all the normal... And all your controls are right there on the steering wheel. Yeah, it has an eight-speed automatic transmission, but you can shift it uh, manually with these paddle shifters if you want to. But the transmission is so smooth that uh, I drive it just to be automatic. It's got everything you need, certainly, and more. It's much smarter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> much smarter than both of us. Absolutely. But now, we've got the interior. Let's 
There's that feature in the back yeah. that I want you to show us. Come on. So what did you do to open it up? Just press on the Bentley sign. It's an absolutely stunning car. It is a stunning car. And I hope you have a lot of fun and a lot of great driving. It's been a pleasure. Same here. Thank you for letting us enjoy your car. And for you, Liz, it's been especially wonderful. You want to do this for a living. That's what, <laughs> so I've been told. We're here with Richard, Richard Miner, but he's got a beautiful, beautiful, did I say beautiful, Alfa Romeo. And it is such a unique car that I'm not even going to attempt to talk about it. I'm going to let him talk about his car. So please let us know about your car. Let's start with how long have you had it? Uh, I found the car in 2003. It was in a farmer's field in Surrey, covered with a blue tarpaulin, not running. Literally. Well, well of course. Right? Where else would you find it? And uh, I went and looked at the car. There was no rust. The floor was not rusted. The panels were not rusted. I was thinking of buying it as a parts car for my 72 Alpha. Mm -hmm. When I saw the condition it was in, it's not a parts car. Even though it wasn't running and it needed mechanical work, mm -hmm. it was restore a restorable car. I um, borrowed a trailer from a friend, took it on the ferry from Surrey over to Williamsburg, okay. James City County. Um, I got lucky and found that the mechanical problem was oil in the water, water in the oil, and I got lucky that it was just a head gasket. Okay. I pulled the head, found it was just a head gasket. I had a valve job done, and I had the head trued up, and I put it back together, and the engine runs fine. Had 55,000 miles on it at that time. Okay. Now it's got 100 and about 136. So needless to say, you've been driving. Oh yes, and for a while I used it as a daily driver. Okay. Um, the interesting thing for me about the car is the mechanics. Right? Okay. The engine is a two liter. It's all aluminum, the block and the head, both. There's steel sleeves for the piston cylinder. Um, the head is hemispherical, so basically it's a two liter Hemi. It's a little Hemi. Puts out 131 horsepower, and it weighs about 2,600 pounds, so it, it handles like a water bone. Okay. Right. Um, variable valve timing, Bosch fuel injection, so it was advanced for its time, time period. Yeah. Um, and it has a ZF3 automatic transmission in it. Now, really? They only made 180 <laughs> spiders ever with automatic transmissions. In it. Okay. So it's rare from that standpoint, very rare. What about the color? Most of these do not come in black that I can remember. No, I was at a show once and I asked people to vote for me on diversity's sake because I didn't have a red one. Mm -hmm. I was the only non-red Alfa Romeo in that show. Um, more as a joke than the, the real rarity is the transmission. I just redid the seats this year um, with a diamond pattern uh, seat. Mm -hmm. I did all of the suspension, every bushing you could find, every tie rod end, uh, center link end, sway bar link end, uh, upper and lower ball joints and control arms, uh, rear trailing arm bushing, everything. Okay. It handles like a brand new car. Okay. It handles it. Let's take a look at the interior. Okay. My wife got me the boot for Christmas two years ago, and it's beautiful, but it showed up the fact that the door panels were so faded, so I had to have those re-dyed to match all the tan. Um, I had sheepskin seat covers on it, but recently I had the, sheets, the seats done in leather diamond, diamond pattern. Um, and say that oh and my my floor mats are embossed with the Alfa Romeo's insignia um, under the hood all the decals are still on the hood from the original dealership up in New Jersey where it was purchased originally the trunk looks brand new 
the rug is nice. And to be honest, with all the work that needed to be done over the years, the club members, the Alfa Romeo Owners Club members were a big help. Yes, because several of them are much better mechanics than I am, so they help me a lot. Um, and the convertible top, I had a professional put on because I was not going to mess with canvas and glue. Um, just didn't think I'd be able to pull that off. And of course, the paint job. I had to paint it in a, a light metallic black instead of the straight black that the original car was. Well, class, it's been a blast speaking to these people, and you can see the love that they have for their cars, the pride that they take in restoring these cars. As I said, just like myself, wanting a Rolls Royce since I was 13. And it doesn't matter the type of car that you have. It's the love and the care and the attention to detail that matters. I hope you enjoyed the interviews. I hope you enjoyed looking at the cars. See you next week, class. Drive safe.